Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel, it's Helen, and today I'll be sharing with you guys 10 things all incoming freshmen should know before coming to UC Berkeley. If you guys are new here, my name is Helen and I actually graduated from UC Berkeley in May 2019. But now that I've completed four years at Berkeley and I've had some time to reflect on it, this is my advice for any incoming freshman that's still relevant. So with that being said, let's just jump right into it. I actually grew up in the Bay Area and lived about 30 minutes away from Berkeley, but I know that a lot of the friends that I made in college were either international students or out-of-state students. I think for the people who never visited Berkeley before the SIR and their first time at Berkeley was literally moving day, a lot of them were really confused on what was going on because they thought Berkeley was in California. And when you think of California, you think of sandy beaches, really warm weather, and Hollywood. But that's definitely not Berkeley. Berkeley is actually located in San Francisco Bay Area, and when most people think of California, they think something more similar to LA County or San Diego. I know so many people who come to Berkeley and they only pack warm weather clothes, but it actually gets pretty chilly here. I'm pretty biased by that because I'm pretty weak when it comes to any extreme weather changes. The Bay Area climate is pretty mild so there's no snow or extreme heat, but in the mornings it could definitely get down to 40 to 50 degrees Fahrenheit. So make sure you are coming to Berkeley to not just bring warm weather clothes. Even though we don't have beautiful beaches in Hollywood, there's a lot of things actually to do in the San Francisco Bay Area. A lot of the attractions in the Bay Area have to do with history or tech. So if you guys are interested in those things, Berkeley is perfect for you. But if you guys are interested in sandy beaches, warm weather, and Hollywood, definitely check out some schools down in SoCal. Because I know you guys are signing up for housing right now, another thing to note is that none of the dorms or apartments are actually located on campus. Unlike other universities where the dorms are traditionally on campus, all of the housing at UC Berkeley is actually located on the perimeter of the campus. They're not too far away from campus, and I think the one that's furthest away from campus is around a 10 to 15 minute walk, depending on how fast you walk. I've got to say the most popular dorms, I think, are Unit 1, Unit 2, or Unit 3. I think that's because the units are super close to where the majority of freshman classes are held, so for example, Dwinnell Hall and Wheeler Hall. I think last year they opened up Blackwell, which is right across from Unit 3, so I think the three units as well as the Blackwell dorms will probably be the most popular choice for most incoming freshmen. I know a lot of athletes live in Clark Kerr and people who want to have a larger room. The Clark Kerr rooms are much bigger than the unit rooms. But keep in mind, Clark Kerr is a little bit further away from central campus than the units in Blackwell. If you guys are an engineering student, you might want to think about living in Foothill or Stern. Those two dorms are really close to the engineering area of campus, so you don't have to walk too far away to get to your classes. A downside would be that probably a lot of your friends would live in the units or in Blackwell or in Clark Kerr because those are all located on south side of Berkeley, whereas the engineering area is located on north side. I think it would be a smart decision to plan where you live in relative to your classes just so it makes it more convenient to attend. Trust me, I had 8 a.m. discussions before and when I left my room at 7.55, I was so thankful that I lived near my class. Speaking of classes, I think a rookie mistake that a lot of freshmen do make is that you guys aren't realistic with yourselves. I remember in high school, I used to wake up at 6 a.m. and get to class at 7 a.m. So I thought when all the college students complained about their 8 a.m. classes, I thought they were crazy because I've been doing this 7 a.m. thing since I was in middle school. And boy was I wrong. I really dreaded going to my 8 a.m. discussions when I was a freshman because I didn't realize how much later I'd be staying up. You know, when you're a freshman, that's the first time you're not living at home and you don't have a curfew and you just want to socialize with your friends. But you don't realize how people love socializing at 2 a.m. in the morning. Back when I was in high school, I used to be asleep at 11 p.m. and that's why I would be able to wake up at 6 a.m. But then when I was a freshman, I was staying up to 2 to 3 a.m. and I couldn't possibly think that I could function correctly by just having 5 hours of sleep. I'm just not that kind of person. So definitely be realistic with yourselves. Obviously, if that discussion or if that class is only available at 8 a.m., you should still take it. But if you do have other options, try to go for something a little bit later in the day. I usually like 9 to 10 a.m. classes. This tip doesn't apply to everyone, but I know a lot of you guys are probably just like me and can't really wake up that early in the morning and can't function off 5 hours of sleep. So my next tip would be relevant for you guys who want to study abroad, and that's to plan accordingly. Before coming to college, I knew I wanted to study abroad. I didn't know about the things that would get in the way of me studying abroad, which is internships, jobs, and any required classes that I have to take at Berkeley. So please, if you are trying to study abroad, make sure you plan accordingly and make sure you know when you want to study abroad. I personally wish I studied abroad as freshman summer because I just went on vacation that summer and I thought I'll be able to do it next summer, but I actually got an internship. 
Also, you need to know a lot of required classes for majors are only to be taken at Berkeley. Berkeley doesn't accept any other school's classes except their own. So make sure to save some breath classes so you can take those while you're studying abroad instead of your major classes. I really wish I didn't miss out on the study abroad experience because all of my friends who did study abroad told me they had a great time. So don't make my mistake and make sure to plan accordingly. One of the things that you need to know before coming to Berkeley that I didn't know was that you need to apply to most clubs and organizations. If you're coming to Berkeley, I'm pretty sure you already know that it's a super academically competitive school. But what you might not know is that it's also super competitive to get into clubs and organizations on campus. Now I'm saying that it's competitive to get into pre-professional organizations such as any sort of professional fraternities or professional consulting clubs, something of that sort. Obviously, if you get into organizations and clubs that are just for fun, then it wouldn't be too hard. They might still have an application process though. So if you are planning to apply to organizations, make sure you're prepared. That would consist of maybe a resume, cover letter, LinkedIn, and maybe brush up on some interview skills. Most of the on-campus organizations that I apply to all require a resume, a cover letter, and then the second step would be an in-person interview. Maybe multiple rounds if they're that intense. So if you don't have a resume, cover letter, and LinkedIn, I would suggest that you spend your summer making one. There's a lot of resources everywhere about how to make a cover letter and resume, so you guys had no excuse. Also, I really recommend asking someone who's been through this before for any feedback on your resume and cover letter just so you can make it even better. So one of the most valuable things that I learned in college was that relationships are super important, not the romantic kind. The romantic kind can be important too depending on who you are. I'm talking about the relationships that you foster with your professors and your TAs and your peers. I learned that it's really more about who you know rather than what you know. Especially at a top university like Berkeley, the professors are super highly regarded in whatever industry they're in. So whether you're planning to go into that industry or going to grad school, it'll be really important to foster a good relationship with at least some of your professors. Also, TAs and office hours are super underrated. First of all, it's important to foster relationships not only with your professors but also your TAs. They're usually the ones that are doing most of the grading and can probably teach it to you better than your professor can. Because a lot of them are undergraduate and graduate students, they're dealing with this material firsthand. I used to think that no one goes to office hours, but when I actually went consistently, I realized there was a core group of people who showed up at every single office hours, and they're usually the smartest ones in the class. If not the smartest, they're definitely the ones that the professor knows and likes the most. So you guys might as well build the habit early on and attend office hours and make sure that it's a priority for you and not something that's optional. This doesn't apply for all classes, but I feel like it would apply to most of you guys. Another thing that would be really helpful is to learn the public transportation system. So that includes AC Transit, Bear Transit, and BART. This will save you so much time if you have to go to a class far away from where you live, and you're already paying for AC Transit and Bear Transit, so might as well. You can get it to go to most of the places in the East Bay, and you can even go to SF as well. AC Transit and Bear Transit has saved me so many times from when I didn't want to walk to class or I didn't want to walk back home. And when I hear that some of my friends went all four years without using it at all, it makes me sad to think that $400 went to nothing. With all the public transportation systems, you really don't need to bring a car when you come here. My next tip for incoming freshmen would be to put yourself out there. I know this is super vague, but I feel like the majority of friendships that you make in college do happen freshman year. There are a lot of cheesy events that are put on for freshmen to meet each other, but don't be afraid to actually go to those and meet some people that are also the same year as you and have the same interests as you. Never think you're too good to meet people because you never know you might meet your newest best friends there. I think I mentioned this before, but it's super hard to make friends in class during college. Unlike high school when you see the same people every single day from 8 to 3, college you see all different types of people and your lectures are just so massive, especially freshman year. I was in a lecture that was filled with 500 people and I always sat next to a different person every single time. And if you think about it, you're going to these lectures two to three times a week and these lectures are probably filled with 300 to 500 people and everyone's taking notes for the entire hour. It's probably unlikely that you're going to meet friends there. So it's really important to just put yourself out there, whether it be with your dorm mates, your hallmates, your roommates, or just people you've met at events. I think a lot of people can be really shy and maybe overthink it, but I think 
freshman year, everyone's trying to make some friends. Everyone is more willing and open to meet people because I realize once you start getting older and older, people start getting more and more closed off. So take this opportunity. Don't think you're too good for it and don't think that people are judging you too much. And if they are, who cares about them? Like, you probably won't have to see them ever again. Berkeley is a big school. I would say that freshman year is super fun. You get to go to all these new events, finally have some sort of freedom for the first time and maybe meet a lot of new people. But I think it's also super important to really form some self-discipline early on before anything too bad happens. By this, I mean that you should have fun, but not too much fun. Make sure you're still on top of your schoolwork like you were in high school. Make sure you're still spending time to do all of like, the things that you're supposed to be doing. Make sure to just be a responsible human being, or at least try to be. Because I realized there's a massive difference in the college experience for people who started self-discipline early on and was able to balance everything versus the people who had a rocky start in the beginning and fell a little bit late when it came to the self-discipline thing. Make sure to stay healthy and not feed your body too many bad things. I think you'll have a much smoother and pleasant college experience and not self-sabotage yourself and cause yourself a lot of stress later on. The next tip that I have for you guys is to make sure that you build good spending habits. The Bay Area has one of the highest costs of living in the United States. It can be super expensive to live here, especially when it comes to rent. Also, everyday expenses such as food and dining can be really expensive as well. So make sure you just build some good spending habits while you're in college. Make sure you stay responsible and maybe even take up a part-time job. There's a lot of small businesses that are around in Berkeley because I think they purposely try to promote small businesses in the Southside area. You can also see if you qualify for work study and a lot of work study jobs and internships can be found on Handshake. Similar to what I said before, make sure to lay a foundation of good spending habits so it doesn't cost you too much stress later on. The last tip that I have for you guys is career and internship related and that is to make a handshake account. I think it's a rookie mistake for freshmen to apply to internships on LinkedIn, Indeed, all those websites that are free for all for everyone. That means the company is specifically looking to recruit UC Berkeley students for that job or internship. This gives you an advantage over LinkedIn and Indeed because it actually narrows it down for you. The applicant pool is much smaller because it's just for Berkeley students rather than for all of the public. So if you are interested in looking for a job or internship, make sure to start that right away. I personally know that it works because I got most of my internships and jobs from this platform. The job that I'm currently working at right now is because I got a full-time offer after I completed the summer internships that I found on Handshake. I know most of my friends who went through internships and have full-time roles also found their job listing on Handshake. So there's a lot of testimonials on it. So those are all the tips that I have to share with you guys today. If you guys like this video, make sure to click the like button down below and leave me a comment if you guys are planning to attend UC Berkeley and any questions that you might have. I may or may not continue this series. I kind of want to film a video on the best and worst financial decisions that I made in college. So if you guys are interested in watching that, let me know down below as well. Anyways, if you guys want to connect with me outside of YouTube, make sure to follow me on Instagram because I post on my story pretty much daily. I've also been creating TikTok videos, so feel free to follow me there. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!